Group C, the United States group, USA, Uruguay, Panama, and Bolivia. If I am Greg Berhalter right now, he's probably in a car heading back to a very fancy hotel and maybe a very fancy meal there in uh, Miami. I'm licking my chops. I am saying this is a great group. This is a winnable group. This is a group that is competitive. And I think you said on air today, uh, Stu, that you know you do want to have some competition in this, especially given the fact that we're not going to have a lot of competition when it comes to the, to the U.S. Again, the U.S. will play Bolivia first. If the U.S. can't find a way to beat Bolivia in the United States in 2024 in a Hope Copa America, gone. then we got a, <laughs> we got much, much bigger problems. Then Panama, we know them well. Good team, not a great team. And the U.S. should be favored. And the U.S. should, therefore, in those first two games, I would be disappointed if they came out with anything less than six points. Two wins right there. So now you're sitting on the opportunity to win the group <clears throat> against the biggest competition, which is Uruguay. Everybody I've talked to in the hallways and, and you guys here, they're not scared, but it's, whoa, this is Uruguay. I'm not as scared as Uruguay of Uruguay as, as you guys. Tell me why I'm wrong. Well, look, this is a, a nation historically, again, going all the way back to the beginnings of World Cups. Copa America is one of the most successful historic nations, especially considering their size. But I think, you know, when you look back at recent World Cups, I mean, 2010, they had a good run to a semifinal. Uh, in the last World Cup, they were not as good as we've seen them before. The one before, they lose to a Portuguese team that was good. But they have real talent, man. You think about Valverde, a player playing at Real Madrid. Darwin Nunez playing at Liverpool. Pelistri is one of the exciting young players at Manchester United. They're stacked from, from front to back. And now they have the one, the only Marcelo Bielsa as the coach. And I think he's found a style that suits this team better than previous coaches have. Because they, you know, they had a coach for, what was it, 30, 40 years is one mm -hmm. of the longest standing. Tabarez is one of the longest standing international coaches of all time. But now you've got a coach that is playing a high-octane, powerful style. They beat Argentina in World Cup qualifying. They beat Brazil. And I just think that they play in a way that's so in your face and difficult with the type of physical characters and also a little bit of nastiness sure, as well. Sure, definitely. Without that, a doubt. That, that I think they, they makes them a, a difficult opponent. And it's showing right now in qualifying. And I think they're going to mean business in the Copa America. That's, they, what, that's why I, I, like, I love this test for okay, the U.S., good. though. I love it. Are they better than the Netherlands? Are they better than the Netherlands? Because uh, I, I that's like a touchstone yeah, right now I is would, that Netherlands game. I, I would take them in a one-off against the Netherlands. Okay, yeah. cool. Mossy? Yeah. Yeah, I think this was a great draw in terms of advancing, but a terrible draw in terms of winning the group. They got the toughest pot two team they could have gotten. In fact, I think Uruguay is the second best team in this tournament behind Argentina. I'm, I'm very high on them, as, as Stu is. I, yeah, as you know, I'm a Bielsa groupie. So. Yep. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that midfield, Valverde, Bentancourt, Ugarte, the PSG player. They've got a guy in Araujo at the back who I think is Ooh, he's one a, of the best yeah, defenders machine. in the world. The, the center forward dynamic is interesting. Nunez has clearly emerged. He's the top scorer in, in Commonwealth World Cup qualifying. They, they did recall Suarez for the last two qualifiers. He's now going to enter Miami. We'll see how he does there. He was just voted, by the way, the player of the year in the Brazilian league. And so, you know, if Suarez is on the team come next summer, is he going to be comfortable just being the understudy to Nunez? Or yeah. is, there, is there a discussion there over uh, how they're going to divvy up his minutes? I, but to be able to bring off the bench a guy it's like good problem, Suarez man. is pretty good, as long as but, he yeah. doesn't take over the show. But it doesn't strike yeah. me that he's... It's just something to keep an eye on. But yeah, the way the schedule lays out, the fact that the U.S. and Uruguay play Panama and Bolivia first, Presumably they'll both win those two games. And then it comes down to that show, showdown at Arrowhead to see who tops the group. And I think there's a good chance the U.S. finishes second, which could set up a quarterfinal matchup with Brazil, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, okay, so let's delve a little bit more into the U.S. in particular. Um, while we've talked all about the pressure and the opportunity that exists next summer for this U.S. team, and this U.S. team that is, again, I said on air today, they're no longer young, all right? They're no longer green. They've been through a World Cup process. They've been, they've been blooded, and therefore our expectations should be higher. I think the person that is under the most pressure is going to be Greg Berhalter. I think that this is a huge and vital and important summer for Greg Berhalter. So much so that if it does not go well, I think that there is a change made. Keep in mind, this is a Greg Berhalter who was given a second chance, and a lot of people felt that he didn't deserve that second chance. This is a Greg Berhalter who I think is on a short leash when it comes to Matt Crocker, who hired him. And not that he didn't hire him because he felt he was the best to do the job or that he didn't feel that he would get to 2026, 
But if there ever came a point where he felt it was not heading in the right direction, not only do I think he would do it, it's his responsibility to do that next summer. And if it does not go well for the U.S. and Greg Berhalter, I would absolutely see U.S. soccer making a change here. And you know what? It would be legitimate. That's how important 2026 is to this team and obviously to the sport. You cannot afford to screw around when it comes to 2026. And so if you even have an inkling that it's not going in the direction that you want it to do, you have, a, like I said, you have a responsibility to make the change. And I think Greg Berhalter understands but that. But also your only time to make that change, True. really. I, I, if you want to give a new coach an opportunity to have a longer leash. And look, we, we can't overstate enough that this is the biggest moment for the United States before the World Cup. The only real time. Look, friendlies are friendlies. I, I know you can schedule against some of the best teams in the world. When you're playing them in a friendly environment as opposed to a game and a knockout situation with a trophy on the line, it's not even or comparable. Or in qualifying process. In even the qualifying that, oh, yeah. process is the same. The intensity is not the same. And so now for this team, to your point, have played one major tournament now at a World Cup and have had some pretty good performances, but yet there's no marquee win. There's no marquee performance that has gone along Along with the three points and a big win where they can look back and say, you know, the England game I thought was excellent, but it was a tie, a 0 0 tie. We didn't score, we didn't create enough chances. The Netherlands game, sure, there were some chances. Pulisic should have scored the chance. We lost. We got smashed at the end of that game. So now, I mean, for you guys, what is success for this U.S. team in the Copa America? I mean, when you look at this, is it is quarterfinals but a great performance against Brazil and we no, lose on penalties? I think semifinals. The semifinals team, or bust. This team has to get to. This, oh yeah, I think this team needs to get to the semifinals. And this is, by the way, this is not some historic feat. It's been done twice before by U.S. teams in Copa Americas. And if this is the group that we think it is, and that everybody says it is, then that should that's not ridiculous. I'm I'm sick of the low expectations at this point. All right, and. To, to your but point. are they unrealistic expectations? I don't think that they're how, unrealistic. How good is this team? I don't think they're unrealistic. And Greg Berhalter, actually, on the interview with Jenny uh, before, before the, uh, the, the draw, was talking about, we don't want to compete anymore. We want to actually beat these teams that we're yeah. talking about. I don't care how they do it. It really doesn't matter to me anymore. I want to win. I want to go up against these big teams, whether it's the Netherlands, whether it's in Uruguay or anybody else. When people say, you know what, this is a better team, and the U.S. finds a way to win. Mossy. By the way, I looked this up. You played in the 93 and 95. I did, yes. America's two was seven and nine years old. When I, was <laughs> uh, Appreciate I, that, I think this draw uh, makes it completely unacceptable for the U.S. to go out in the group stage, but a bit more acceptable to go out in the quarterfinals. If they, it presumably would be Brazil or Colombia in the, in the quarterfinals, if they play well, lose a close game to one of those teams, I, I don't think Greg Berhalter would be fired off that. I think we're all projecting onto Matt Crocker the way we think things should be, but I've not gotten any vibe from him that this Copa America is that make or break, semifinals or bust. He went through that exhaustive process. He rehired Greg Berhalter, felt like he was the right guy to steer the U.S. for another cycle 2026. Yeah, if something disastrous happens before then, he would pull the plug on it, but I don't know that losing a competitive game to Brazil and a So Copa you're America satisfied with final. moral victories going forward? Sure. <laughs> Well, that's, well, we'll get to your Brazil in a second. <laughs> that's, that's the attitude going forward. Um, uh, when it comes to anybody else in this, uh, in this group, uh, does everybody agree here that those first two games, there should be an expectation of winning, getting six points in the yeah. first two games? Yes. yes. And so then it comes down to that, uh, to, uh, to that third game. And to your point, the possibility exists that if you don't finish first in the group, that you end up playing Brazil. I was very impressed by the way Panama smoked Costa Rica in that Nations League quarterfinal. Oh, listen, Panama's a and good team, not a great team. They've given some trouble yep. over the years. So, yeah, no, absolutely. That, that, that's not going to be a 3-4-0 game for no, the United no, States. No. I mean, this Thomas Christensen's a good coach. They went to the Gold Cup final once again. They knocked yeah, out a yeah. U.S. B team, B slash C team in the Gold Cup. But it, there's history there. That's going to be a lot of emotion. That's going to be an intense game. But I don't think in terms of the way that the tournament is set up, it couldn't set up any nicer for the U.S. The, the weakest opponent in the tournament in Bolivia first, Panama second, going to be a little bit of a bloodbath. But, you know, this is something we talked about a little bit on the broadcast. Part of a tournament as well is that there's tournaments within the tournaments. So you have the group stage, which is the beginning, but it's about setting yourself up to then be successful in the knockouts. And as a coach and as a team, you have to find a way to be able to peak in the right moments. So I think the U.S. has got to think about, like, let's say they win, they get three points against Bolivia. 
They get three points against Panama. You've now booked your ticket to the next round. It gives you a little bit of liberties to think about that last group match against Uruguay and the way in which you approach it personnel-wise to think, look, do we go for it here and we smash through and give it our all against Uruguay? I'd like to see that because I think these are our only chances to play these teams. So maybe you play a little bit of a weaker team against Panama, but then you're risking the last game. But this is about Greg Berhalter learning how to play his way through a tournament. You know, Lex, load management, your favorite thing. Oh, God, favorite don't, thing. don't start me. Don't <laughs> start me. Don't think me. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.